recording. So addendum to the initial common root facilitator call and um, sliding back to the rich question that Jeremy had posed um, to Dev about what is the context of honey root for those who maybe uh, have not been as close to, to its inception and its growth over the last five years. Um, so just taking this opportunity to just conversationally between Dev and I to um, articulate what, what is the context that um, Honey Root has been living into and what are, what are the values that we have come to distill down to? Um, yeah, it feels like they're emerging and refining the values or for, uh, emerging and refining. So um, I'm curious, Deb, what strikes you when you think about maybe starting from the place of inception, like the potency inside of you that gave rise to honey root. Like what is the container that you were longing for to see come to fruition that wasn't yet, you weren't seeing. Um, I have some ideas about certain aspects of, of what the, this particular honey root um, context brings, but just like what is that inception piece that you've supported emerge into the world? Yeah. Just before I jump into that, what I'm wanting to share, Steph, is that it's so nice sitting here with you because it allows me to, to, to go as wide as I need to go, knowing that you will also like bring it right into the practicals of how that actually has manifested in like a detail oriented way. So I'm right. just appreciating one of our highest values, which is working within relationship so that mm -hmm. one person can hold one piece and the other person can go soaring in the other direction. And, and that, that collaborative relational way of working um, allows more to come through. If we're right. having to hold all the pieces ourselves, it's kind of like a more refined, a, a more confined version of ourselves. Um, and so thank you for doing this with me so that I can mm -hmm. um, swing far. Um, yeah. But the question's great. The, basically, Honey Root came to be, um, there's a few different stories that I weave together. One is that I saw that, um, there was a lot of women's empowerment work going on. And at least through my eyes and through my experience, a lot of it was being done um, conceptually, working with our belief systems, um, working with affirmation, um, doing work that had to do with visioning ourselves in a particular way and living into that vision. Mm -hmm. And what I saw when I really saw empowered women, and in my context that meant on a lot of dance floors, is that I saw that women that were um, breathing together, um, able to move their bodies through a lot of space, um, able to uh, bring, bring mobility through their spine, um, feel their strength in certain movements that, that, that created um, more density through their body or through their core, um, bending their knees and really getting uh, use of that earth energy, you know, of rebound, that when I saw the most empowered women, I was seeing them on dance floors. And then when I was seeing what I considered empowered women walking around, it was women that I almost could see them as um, women that were bringing their awareness into their form. Mm -hmm. something you know that's a hard thing to, to measure but what is that there's like there's an aliveness through their body and that's what really registered for me in fact I'd say uh, there was a little distance for me between women that were doing it in more of that um, kind of cognitive uh, visionary way that's a wonderful path as well and hopefully mm -hmm. we include it in our work at Honey Group but something that I really wanted to do was create a context where women could uh, move into this, this world of empowerment through the birthright of, yes, I get to be in my body in a way that um, I feel relaxed and strong um, mm -hmm. and that my sensitivity is actually useful. Mm -hmm. than a right. you know? 
Um, so that's, that's one of the streams. And then, uh, and then also that there, <clears throat> myself and, and those that were part of the early collaboration um, had so many opportunities, you know, just basically taking our privilege of our life, had had so many opportunities to be in uh, somatically oriented environments, women's empowerment environments, and then spiritually focused environments. And it's like the amount of teachings and the amount of experience that we got to be around, it's kind of like, it almost felt like our responsibility to pull it together and share it more. Mm -hmm. uh, and then as my creative artist self likes to, likes to paint a picture for, I just, I wanted to pull together a lot of potency and see like what happens when all that vibration comes together, when all that aliveness, when all that embodied aliveness comes together. Um, so it was also just my curiosity mm -hmm. of what would happen if. So there's always been kind of a, a, a labbing experimental value to Honey Root. Mm -hmm. Much yeah, and that, and that wisdom comes through exponentially with collaboration mm -hmm. rather than um, this other idea that is very pervasive in Western culture, which is the, the um, individual cult of personality singular teacher um, or guru path um, that they're what I also see in honey root is a strong value around the collaborative effort and that we, we truly are um, greater than the sum of our parts than any one of us individually um, could be mm -hmm. by coming together and offering in this way. So I love this, this embodied uh, value system, this, um, embodying of empowerment. What does that really look like? How, what is the impact um, on other when we're embodying our presence? And then this collaborative nature. And then I feel like there's this a third that was coming coming through you. Mm. Yeah. yeah, the third has a little more of my like activist in it. Um, it's um, that that ferocity of we've got to do something here mm. the watching myself and my women friends and myself in relationship and my women friends in relationship um feel like we get into moments where something that we knew from the inside out had a hard time translating to the people around us mm. and thus having to morph ourselves into strange shapes in order to try to meet the world that wasn't really inside of some of um, what felt so, so near, dear and true to our hearts. Mm -hmm. um, and so like relational values or making room for vulnerability um, that there was something really fired up in me at the time of, of inception. And it was like, we've got to do something. And, and I want to do it well. I want to do it in a way where we are kind of systematically just bringing people into um, greater skill sets and giving people more tools so that it doesn't have to be just these like big explosions of like, you better hear me. You can't hear me, you know, because we finally mm -hmm. got to where women had a little more room to be the like, you know, welcome the bitch back or something like that. Mm -hmm. but, um, but to, but to have... <clears throat> okay, we'll have a context where all that big energy can come out and have, have its time because we, we have a value on um, the energy itself getting its space, the mm -hmm. raw energy. Um, and at the same time, what, what tools and what skill sets can we be um, creating in our field together so that when we're in these contexts where the outside world isn't necessarily feeling, seeing, grokking what we've awakened in ourselves. Um, that we have tools where we can get ourselves a little more comfortable, a little bit more comfortable with that reality. And then also be the bridges mm -hmm. where we start to bridge and say, Hey, there's something really important about these feminine principles that I am carrying in a really alive way as a woman's mm -hmm. uh, And I sure hope that people are ready to listen. You know, so. Mm -hmm. Right. So claiming <clears throat> generating and uh, in some regard, generating in a context in which feminine principles, <clears throat> and I use the word feminine still because that's where we are perhaps in the 
ideology, evolution, integration of these concepts, these um, ways of being that hold a value around sensing vulnerability, relationship um, that are attributed to the feminine, but that we are claiming um, and creating a context where that can be seen and valued. And that there's actually, I love that this, this part of you that claims it as an activism, it's an act of um, social change. Mm -hmm. We're doing this in our individual bodies and as a collective to, to say that this is important. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I feel that as a third, a third pillar, creating context where the feminine can be seen, acknowledged, um, and studied so that others can, can continue their own um, deepening relationship with the feminine that lives within them, mm -hmm. whether they're in a woman's body or a man's body. Yeah. yeah. Or one who's not identifying with gender or sex, like there, that there's still something to be said for um, the, the aspect of life, let's call it the aspect of life that is about receptivity. Mm -hmm. you know, and I love that, that the body is a really good place where we can see that, that the, the, in the context of, of creating more of ourselves, it's, it's that male body that enters into, hopefully, and you know, may it be a receptive uh, female body, or even just the shapes that we are. So I'm still comfortable using things like feminine principles, as long as we're not like glomming them on to being a woman. But as far as what nature can teach us, that there's something about receptivity yeah. and the vulnerable space that that holds, not that it's not vulnerable to be a penetrating force, that also comes with vulnerability. Um, and then also the relational field, like, like in, the, in, the, in the material world, in the world of matter, that's where we can say, like, we seem to be doing a dance of relationship. Here's my body, here's the chair I'm sitting in, you know, here's, here's the fact that I'm saying, my body, right, you know, I'm sitting in. over there, right, that, that somehow something I'm saying is making your head nod over there, you know, and like, and there's, there's this whole relationship world that the world of matter kind of insists that we, that we dance in. And, and so that's where it almost feels like spiritual activism, where it's like, wow, we as a greater culture kind of went for the love of, love of God, and here's where the concepts like goddess come in handy. It's like we went so far even into our literature, even, you know, the great book being written in, in, in context of God. And then so when we're talking about welcoming back the wisdom that lives in matter, that's what we're talking about when we're talking about like creating an environment where the goddess can be rewelcomed. It's like, let's, let's bring in the wisdom of the material world and say, hello, hello, hello. <laughs> like mm -hmm. there's so much here. There's so much here. Everything that we're trying to solve with our, with our scientific minds, there's actually so much going on already that will provide us with the wisdom we need as we drop into our bodies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm, I'm feeling a fourth pillar mm. or certainly a, um, what I perceive and my, my personal experience about a value, um, embodied value around, around relationship and support and community. So um, even though you touched on it in this previous pillar of creating context that values relationship, there's actually this, um, it feels like it's its own um, commitment which is to bring, at least historically, to bring women together into sisterhood or healing sisterhood wounds yes. um, as part of this, this uh, path of women's work, which is acknowledging where, as women, we have um, had challenges with one another or been betrayed or been the betrayer. Um, yeah, created separation in a field that we're hoping to bring more cohesion. Mm -hmm. And there's so much there. I just feel like, you know, thinking back on all these amazing, powerful, transform transformative, tender experiences that I've had in Honeyroot settings of this um, tender wound being um, touched and healed little by little mm -hmm. and feeling really grateful. So I really want to hold that as, as um, 
its own fourth pillar, that the value of relationship and um, tending to the sisterhood relationship and how do we how do we stand for and with one another to become the biggest fullest most powerful expression that we can possibly be Mm -hmm. Uh, and what do we need to do inside our own selves to to make that so Mm -hmm. yeah right and and that's beautiful because that's absolutely an important piece and i think i can say that that is actually something quite unique that year after year in the honey root fields that we've gotten to a place that um, there's not a lot of competition that shows up in our field other than the competition that we carry in, you know, but we create a context where we can, we can verbalize that. Oh, here I am comparing myself to that woman that is moving her body in a certain way or seems to um, attract men in a certain way or seems to, Um, speak with authority more than I've learned to do, or that one that really knows how to like be quiet and seduce the world the way that I'd love to learn to do more, you know, like these worlds of comparison that create more of a a rainbow of our experience rather than something that we have to separate ourselves from. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think that a lot of, a lot of women want to live into that world. And I think something that Honey Root's been able to provide are how-tos and our how-tos, and this brings us into one of our principles, is one of them is actually knowing that there are practices that help us build a capacity to hang with different emotional states. When we don't have the capacity to hang with different emotional states, that's when we do a lot of cutting off and fragmenting. That's when we do things like come up with concepts of like, oh, well, I have to get away from that person anyway because this and that, you know, and, and to be a field that welcomes and embraces and moves towards wholeness um, requires a, an embodied capacity to hang with certain feelings and certain emotional quali- qualities as they run through our body without checking out of ourselves, which is one strategy on what to do in situations where we don't have a capacity or cutting ourselves off from another. Mm-hmm. And, um, and basically we, we want to say these are fine ab- adaptations at certain moments in time. Mm-hmm. And then when they start creating limitations in our life, meaning, oh gosh, I don't seem to get along with women too well, or gosh, if a man comes into the picture, I don't seem to feel that sisterhood quality anymore mm-hmm. or whatever these things are. We want to create a field where we can practice together expanding our capacity so that we can do that sisterhood thing that a lot of people are talking about saying, yes, of course we have to live like that. So um, right. building a capacity, emotional capacity is definitely something that we've been up to. Yeah. A living embodied laboratory. Mm-hmm. And I just want to be the voice of uh, making explicit that we're still, it's an ongoing process. This is, it's not like we've cracked the code and solved all the problems, but what we're, what I feel like Honey Root is standing for is an ongoing um, inquiry into how do we do this. And as you mentioned, we, we anchor ourselves in somatic practices to build capacity. And there are still aspects of this process um, that we're discovering. Mm-hmm. And we like it. I, I find I like it um, that we're continuing to learn how to do this together. Mm-hmm. Um, so I love this. I feel like this is a, a very helpful, hopefully it's helpful to others, context, this sort of examining of these four pillars that um, and there might be more, but it feels, um, it feels balanced and accurate to my system to, to acknowledge that um, Heine Root has been about bringing the cognitive inquiry, visionary, mind-based transformational processes into the body, um, into direct experience, and actually sourcing the body as a place of knowing and um, relating to life. Mm-hmm. Um, a pillar around activism and the uh, creating a context for feminine values and principles to exist in the world. This healing of the sisterhood, um, relational commitment. And then our fourth, this is actually the second. And mm-hmm. it's funny, there must be something there in it um, that it feels more elusive to me. Embodiment, 
Oh, oh relationship. The, the co-creation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> maybe it's because it's so uh, embedded in, on in all three for me. But yes, this, the distilling this as a, um, a separate value and exploration which perhaps it is a, a wonderful springboard having identified that as this fourth potential pillar um, of the honey rick context and how it brings us into um, the genesis of this first mixed gender mm -hmm. retreat. Um, obviously this exploration that as women we've been inside of um, and cultivating over the last five years in collaboration with with other amazing facilitators women facilitators now we're at a point where um, it does feel appropriate and apt to develop our um, allegiance and our support with our brothers who have also been on their own journey and continue to to um, discover ways that support them in in evolving mm -hmm. um, so I'm wondering if you want to speak a little bit to, to that, to what what you've tracked as the genesis of this. Yeah. Treat. Well, there's something about um, relationship on all those levels, on like the practical level of like, how do we actually um, create these events that we put on? Um, and how do we relate to our own body? And how do we relate to the space around us? And how do we relate to being a member of community? And that, that seems to be something that has bridged us into this, this desire to welcome the men into what we've been up to is that uh, we want to fit into a community context. And, um, and I think that something that, again, is a wide view, but something worth noting is that there are a lot of stories that are coming into the honey root field for healing simultaneously. Um, or so it seems, it seems like there's, there's a conversation about the fragmentation between um, women and men and what it takes to create healthy relations between women and men. Um, not, just in our own personal lives, but on a community level. Um, and so when I think of the vast experiences that we've had that come into a place like a honey root field, it's like, yeah, there are those of us that actually haven't had so much injury or so much pain when it has to do with the story of woman and man, you know? And yet there are those that come into the field where that's the deepest learning. And that's the biggest learning and that in order for them to feel like they are, are empowering themselves in community, they need to be circled in a circle where we're saying this, this story is important too. Mm -hmm. um, and something that is important for me to mention is that there's, there's the walking paradox that we're practicing in honey root. And that is another thing that takes growing an emotional and even mental capacity to hang with is that it's not clear cut. It's that, it's that we're holding a lot at once. You know, I talk about that, that the honey root field is a, is a dual non dual field. We are both saying that there is something worthy of attention that we are separate beings. There is something worthy of attention that says that we are separate beings in relationship to each other. There's something worthy of attention of us being women and men and the, the continuum that rides between those two things, that there's something to that. At the same time, we are practicing what is useful about mm -hmm. taking down some of those boundaries and taking down some of those walls and taking down some of those distinctions. But we're not, we're not a field that says it's more right to do it one way or another. We're a field that is doing our best to incorporate that that is a lived human experience. Mm -hmm. We are, um, like, I feel prickly whenever there's, there's a, a teaching that comes in that says, um, well, you know, in order to better our, better our world, we have to go in this direction. And there's a part of me going like, yeah, agreed. And there's another little part of me going like, if we're really going to be an inclusive field, 
that's not, we got to come off of that view and say like, how can I actually wrap my arms around more, more views that, that, mm-hmm. that say I need to be more of myself. And in order to be more of myself, um, uh, I need more space or in order to be more of myself, I need to feel like the, the fiery part of my nature can light up or in order to be more of myself so that I can feel safe in community. I need to be a woman that actually carries way more of a masculine charge and I need that to be okay. Mm -hmm. So before I, I just wanted to say that, that that's the, that's how wide we want to go is we want to keep practicing both being embodied and having a vast view of what can happen in human reality, you know, both. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, And I, I just, I, I light up whenever I get to talk about it because that, that feels like what makes us different, you know, that we're, that we're doing something that is hard to articulate because it doesn't have all the clear cut lines. It is a walking paradox practice that we are living into together. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, Yeah, at our essence, we are yes. And Mm -hmm. taking, taking a phrase from improvisation, Mm -hmm that we, we acknowledge and we include the paradox, seeming paradox. And therein lies the magic and mystery of life. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah. Thank you for, for naming that, that value. Um, As we do this next move of bringing men and women and all of that, which will come with our individual stories, our lived experiences and a collective piece, um, the archetypal pieces that come with us and then the individual lived experiences are going to be coming together into a, um, into a retreat that certainly I, my hope and desire is that we are practicing together, um, listening deeply to one another, seeing one another on these various layers of the individual lived experience and then whatever archetypal healing we can bring as a collective. We have an opportunity to, to play with, to experiment with um, together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a, there's a way that I hope that we create a field where um, wherever someone is hanging out in that continuum of awareness, whether they're really in their personal story that says, well, yes, bad things have happened in the past, but you know, in my own individual life, I actually seem to be doing okay. Relations between myself and my women friends, relations between me and me and men as a woman, it's actually okay. Mm -hmm. Um, And that that's an okay place to be sitting. Mm -hmm. And my hope is that that doesn't discount that some people are actually plugged into a super archetypal energy that says, you know what, my life has been okay, but I just opened some gate inside of myself that put me in touch with a much larger context. Or, oh my gosh, I just found that I can channel the, uh, the, the, the heat and the, the voice of the earth and I'm still learning how to navigate this thing. You know, mm-hmm. like that my hope is that there can be men there that are going like, you know, I'm, I'm someone that hasn't, I didn't have power dynamics with my mother or I didn't have to take care of my mother or, um, or I've, I've always been someone that can um, be sensitive to women's needs. You know, I haven't felt like I'm overriding or missing anything. I've always been an emotional guy or, you know, whatever it is, I hope that there can both be room for those that are saying, um, this is just an individual experience I'm having and I'm totally okay with that. There are some men in the space going, I have been hurt by woman, you know, yeah. that my story is important. I had a mother who overpowered me or whose emotions overpowered me and there was no room for me. Um, and that there can be room for that archetypal voice of the, of the, the injured um, aspect of man that is looking for healing as well. Mm-hmm. So again, like how vast can we get? How how much room can we can we make for that? There's going to be individual experiences that are important 
and individual stories that are important in the field. And at the same time, there's some big archetypal energy we work with, as I know you've seen stuff in the, in the honey root fields that um, it's almost as if we're inviting it in, you know, we're inviting it in for healing, um, for a playground, um, just to see what happens when we say there's, there's room for all these parts. Mm -hmm. And we're interested in creating a container and a context where, where we're co-creating a, a context where we are as safe as possible. You know, that we're bringing our own personal responsibility, we're bringing our own capacities to track our experience, um, to own our own personal experience as we engage in these conversations with one another. This is sort of jumping ahead to the, the again, some intentions for this particular retreat. Mm -hmm. um, but that, that we also hold a value in differentiating or helping one another differentiate the, the personal content and when, when we're in a more archetypal energy, um, that this is actually part of the investigation. How do I know mm -hmm. uh, as a being what voice I'm bringing forward and how do I deliver this, uh, whatever's moving through me in awareness or um, an emotion to other, whether it be a man or a group of uh, women, how do I um, create safety in myself and in the field by having a sense of what voice is coming through? Right. Yeah, I like that. Being able to, I mean, that's that self-awareness, right? That discernment of like, am I speaking big story right now? <laughs> and thus, what do I need around that? Um, or am I speaking for, you know, a, a very personal I and what do I need around that? Mm -hmm. Right. Being able to recognize that in ourselves, of course, is, is what we ultimately hope we can do. Mm -hmm. And along the way, along the path, when we can be in group contexts and mm -hmm. helping each other sort that out, it's, uh, it's, it's a way to bring more awareness to the stance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Moving, moving into the, you know, why the men? Um, why not? Why not? Of course. Right. All of those. Of it's course. time because it's time. Finally. Um, there's, I, I shared with, uh, with many folks that there's, there's been a desire for me personally to do this big field of doing women's men, women's and men's work together for, for many years. And, um, the message that I got that was a really important message through the muse or whatever was speaking when I asked the question of like, what needs to happen now? Um, the, the message was that getting women rooted into their own body um, was a first step and one that continues to need support in the world and, and we will continue to serve. Um, but before bringing uh, man and bringing kind of that next level of mystery into the field, getting something um, formed in the body that could make room for, oh, there's going to be more energy in the space. There's going to be more story in the space. There's going to be more um, emotional uh, churning in the space just simply by doing nothing else, by, but by bringing um, man's bodies into the space where women have been doing our work for so long. And so there's, there's also like one of our friends said uh, earlier today that we can only do, if, if we're living in a world that is filled with men and women's, women's bodies, if we're doing women's embodiment work and we want to be a community member, we're only doing half of the work. Mm -hmm. you know? And it just seems like, I am so ready and I'm so ready to, to invite as many of our friends and our community members and as possible to say, okay, we actually feel like we have practiced something enough that we're ready for our next step. Not because our mind's ready for it, but because there's actually something registering in our bodies that say we're ready for this next step of, of pulling together community and saying embodiment is a high value. And when we're talking about embodiment, we're talking about, having a capacity to run energy through our body in a way that we can stay on board with presence in the body and then how to have presence in the body and stay relational. 
And so that includes things like building an energetic capacity, meaning I can stay in my body and I can have all this feeling running through me. Um, meaning adaptability. Oh, you know, I thought this moment would go like this, but I see this moment or this conversation is actually going a different way than I thought it would. Do I have tools on what to do in this moment? Or am I going to like freeze up or need to have a strong reaction because the world's not behaving the way I want it to? So adaptability is one of these values that we hope to bring into this, con this uh, context of women's and men's work because, oh my gosh, we have to adapt. We are not going to be in just a circle of our, our women anymore. And I feel confident that we've built a field, even if people are coming into it that haven't been in the honey root field specifically, that we've built a field, a context where adaptability is a high enough value that we've imprinted in that, in that field that, um, that we're ready to make adjustments as needed. I've heard people say like, wait, are you gonna, you know, as men, are you going to expect us to be like honey root women when we come into the field? And it's like, well, goodness, no. Um, we've been practicing adaptability over here. <laughs> and so what we hope is to, to be ourselves and, and, you know, shape shift the way we need to in the moment in order for you men to feel welcome. Because of course, that's an important value of ours is, is uh, creating a field that felt, feels as welcoming as possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm appreciating the sort of depth and breadth of this conversation. Um, and hopefully it will provide some support to those who listen to it all the way through this, creating a context for what Honey Root has been cultivating, standing for, um, some context for why it feels imperative at this point to join in a conversation that includes men and women mm -hmm. who are wanting to wake up and evolve and support one another in, in living our biggest, fullest expressions of our lives. I mean, ultimately, at the end of the day, we are wanting to create a community of allies. And what feels for me personally at the heart of that or essential to that is just continued understanding, creating context where we are intentionally coming together to hear and listen um, deeply. Mm -hmm to see and witness one another in, in the work that we've been doing uh, separately, you know, that this is, this is the ultimate um, commitment to integration mm -hmm. inside ourselves, inside a community. And personally, I also long for more of this, more, places locally, as I know you have um, been cultivating in Nevada City where um, community of men and women are getting together to have this very conversation on an ongoing basis. I long for that to, to occur in more places, mm -hmm. in Santa Cruz, in the Bay Area, um, so that there's ongoing support for, for me personally um, and the people that I know that are in my lives, who I love, that are so up to big things in their world and the, in the the work that they're bringing forward in their relationships. Um, I long for creating a context where we don't have to do romantic relationships in isolation. You know, there's, so there's these other benefits uh, and personal hopes that can come out of this sort of gathering that we're, we're co-creating a collective language that has some values, some shared values. Um, <clears throat> and one of them um, hopefully as the, at the bedrock is how do we embody these, these values mm -hmm. them with one another? Mm -hmm. How do we share best practices um, with yeah. one another? How does it work for you right. over there? I get to share how it works for me over here mm -hmm. as I'm doing my work. So when, when you say best practices, I realize that I hope that a part of what we've cultivated is, um, I've heard many men say like, I just love to be received and I love to be welcome. So my, my, my heart's hope is that this 
can feel like we want it to feel, which is we're opening and saying, we feel ready. You know, we feel ready to, to have you come in. Um, and we also, I also feel like I'm saying, um, I need you, you know, to the men. Mm -hmm. Like that there's, I've been dancing with you, Steph, and, and many of the other women in a, a strong feminine field, knowing that something like Honeyroot has really needed a lot of that, uh, the gift, the highest practice of these creating form and structure. Mm -hmm so much of what's considered like masculine gifts you know like like almost like we've gone as as far as we know how to do um without that that awesome and somewhat mysterious gift of of the uh mature masculine to come in and say i got you and i got you in these mm -hmm. ways you know we know we actually need that mm -hmm. and i hope we can continue to to create a field where uh, that need is is felt and respected and mm -hmm. valued because mm -hmm. it's vulnerable it's vulnerable to to, to rest into that need mm -hmm. um, and then the other thing that i shared with you that i just wanted to say um for those that are listening is that something that i have been playing with is that um even this world of of men and women being uh, living into equality. Personally, I think that socially, that is a good place for the word equality. Um, socially, politically, economically, I think that that's a good place for the, the, the world of saying men and women are equal and let's, let's treat them as equal. Um, and something that I've been experimenting with that still feels a little uh, you know, edgy to feel and yet feels very true for me is that um, when I look at nature, I don't see things as equal. I see things as everyone is playing their part. You know, tree is doing tree, flower is doing flower, bee is doing bee, bird is doing bird. And, and, and there's a way that I believe in something like a honey root wound that's been, you know, buzzing with vibrancy for a while now of actually saying, um, yes to women and men that want to enter into the womb just like happens in our biological story it is it is a woman's body and it is the woman's womb space that makes room for new life to come through so my deepest prayer is that that we're actually doing nature's order of things right now that we are um saying that we as a a body of woman mm. uh, are ready to open ourselves and utilize ourselves for bringing the next life through. And there's a vulnerability that it takes to live as man in a world knowing that you came through women's body. Um, just like there are vulnerabilities of being woman in relation to commonly, you know, man's body that has more physical strength um, and, and granted, I'm, I'm painting broad strokes here, but there is one truth, and that is that human beings get birthed through woman's body. And that even as we open up our mind and move towards more and more um, gender equality and, and, and sex equality, that there is something not to go missed, and that's that we, as a, as a field of women, are opening our bodies to make room for the women and men that want to come through. Mm -hmm. so, and I, um, I pray for right relationship in it all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm really feeling touched by um, the softening that I, I'm seeing in you and, and tears in your eyes and um, the connectedness that you um, with your heart, your full body, that you're sharing this invitation, extending this invitation of welcome to the, to the men who might be new, but also to the women who are returning. Just as a reminder, it was you were just embodying the voice of, of welcoming for all of us to come inside and be in the collective prayer of right relationship 
and um, I feel compelled to to just name the parts of of man that I want to be sure know that they're welcome the the little boys the fierce warrior the um, upright clear seeing visionary um, the wounded unsure awkward parts um, all of it uh, is welcome and it's certainly my intention as a woman in space in the retreat to to make sure and be an advocate for all parts of man are welcome mm -hmm. and that my intention is to be an ally for you um, and and to find what what supports us as individuals and as a collective community um, to be closer mm -hmm. with one another. That's my longing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you, Dev. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Steph. Appreciating this awesome. time with you. Yeah. May it be of service. And uh, I look forward to the expanding conversation, mm -hmm. including more of this amazing facilitation team into, into this very conversation. Mm -hmm. Where do we go from here? Where do we go from here? <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. Mm. Till we meet again. Till we meet again.